Welcome back, everyone. Our next speakers almost need no introduction. Since uh, first appearing at the Congress, oh gosh, I guess going back almost two decades now, we kind of introduced Jaime to the North American UFO community and now worldwide is where he's gone. And Ettorio Garza, likewise. Between the two of them, they are arguably our most anticipated presentation of the week. I won't take any more time. Jaime Mosan and Uterio Garza. Always a pleasure. You know, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to have a presentation around the most recent sightings. I believe everything is important around this phenomenon. But I think what is actual, what is happening now, is what attracts the most interest because that evidence somehow are telling us how this phenomenon is moving. And we can see a change of an agenda from very far to very near. And I think this is happening around the world. We, can see very, we will see very clear videos that will prove that something is happening right now and something is going to happen in the very near future. I really believe we are very close to have a very open demonstration by these creatures. Santiago. I would like to thank, first of all, to the Upper Congress, Bob Brown, Nicole, and uh, Heather, the Board of Directors, for invited, inviting us again to this Congress and giving us the opportunity to share with all of you the results of our research work. Uh, we all know about the UFO wave that took place last year in over Texas. Well, in April 2008, I was privileged to meet Mauricio Ruiz, a family man, a respected businessman who lives in Alvin, Texas, 20 miles, uh, 22 miles from Houston. And uh, on April 11, Mauricio Ruiz had a unique experience. April 11 was a very special day for Mauricio, a day that changed his life forever. That morning, Mauricio was in the garden of his home when suddenly he had an impressive close encounter with a huge, huge UFO craft. So we would like to introduce you, Mauricio Ruiz, and to present to you our whole investigation on his exceptional case. And also, uh, our investigations of UFOs in space. Two NASA missions from last year and one Re Russian mission, including three incidents with images that speak for themselves. And at the end of this presentation, we have a surprise for all of you. So we would like to ask you to remain in your seats, and I promise you will be surprised. So. Dear friends, thank you for coming and enjoy this presentation. As you know, every year we have been presenting the UFOs very close to the projects in the space. Santiago has taken the task to record the full missions in the space because we believe after September 19, 2006, that a new era 
in the space started regarding the presence of these beings. What I mean with this, as you know, last 10 of September, we had a crash. <clears throat> We're not getting the image, okay. As you know, the 10 of September, we had this crash between the cosmos 2251 and the iridium 33 because something happened. We don't know yet what happened because as you know the orbits of these satellites are always steady. They haven't been able to explain why there was this crash and it's possible a new warning because after September 19, 2006, we had the beginning of this new era. You have to remember that day because uh, a little object stopped the, the Atlantis from coming back. This object was there for something from eight hours to 11 hours blocking the Atlantis from coming back. That had to be a warning. That was not accidental. What they want to say is probably that the space, it doesn't belong to human beings, but to every single intelligent creature in the space. In that same mission, the Atlantis was able to record this light that came from very far to very near, stayed there for a few minutes and then left. It happened again on the next mission, STS-116. On December of that year, when two new warnings happened, when these objects got very close to, this, to the discovery and the International Space Station. How can we interpret this? And now we have this crash between two satellites, an impossible crash. The space trash that is in the space is not floating anywhere. It is controlled. They know exactly where every single one of these crafts or remainings of uh, old missions are. It means that it was not accidental. How can we know this is truth? Well, let's watch. Let's see, because I believe this is not going to be the last time we see something like that. In October 2007, the whole mission was observed. This is just very few videos. We have presented this in the past, but we want to prove that we have been, we are being watched in the space. The discovery landing, a UFO got very close to it. And the only, way, the only way to have these images is thanks to Santiago that records hundreds and hundreds of hours every time. And we can prove this presentation is not just about the space, but we could have a very long presentation just from what is happening in the space. These are just a very few examples to prove what I'm trying to say. Now Santiago is going to present you the videos from the last two missions from last year. Yes, uh, in March last year, March, the uh, shuttle uh, Endeavour was launched into space for mission 123. 